Peasants. Yes, actual peasants. Peasant mobs, in fact. Not only that, but rank 9 peasant mobs with 24 melee attack. Not too bad, actually. 14 melee defense. And this might be one of the silliest Bretonian builds I've ever seen before, courtesy of Wei. He has literally only melee infantry, uh, similar to the dumb Chaos Shield Wall. This is the Bretonian Peasant Wall, basically, <laughs> up against Ivress here. Eltharion and the Grim just puzzled and befuddled by rank 9 peasant mobs. We've got Rapunz leading the way. So there might actually be something to this in that these peasant mobs currently, I mean, they have 67 leadership between the Aura of Devotion and everything else. I'm going to be making a leadership uh, video soon, but just everything right now is looking good. I mean, we'll see how they hold up. But Rapunz, of course, has this, uh, this constant AoE melee attack and defense buff if she is in combat. And with that, these peasant mobs are going to be up to 32 melee attack, which is, you know, Empire Swordsman level melee attack. They still only have 16 weapon strength, but wow, just interesting. Also got men at arms with shields, rank 9, uh, rank 9 battle pilgrims, and then the Bee Slayers of Bastone as a final line here. And uh, Lore of Heaven's Caster with Chain Lightning and Harmonic Convergence. So lots of fun. Eltharion the Grim coming in here. Uh, quite the spell loadout. He's got, uh, yeah, the Magic Missile, what is it, Soul Quench. Heal, Apotheosis, Arcane Unforging, and Tempest, so quite a heavy spell loadout. He's probably pretty expensive. Bunch of Rangers, two Swordmasters of Hoeth, which spells trouble, and some Dragon Princes, along with some Spearmen, who will be of absolutely no use here. So, you know, you bring an anti-infantry build against Bretonia, which is just generally not a good idea in the first place, and then they happen to have an entire infantry build. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. The Peasant Mobs actually hang back and allow the Battle Pilgrims to take the charge, which I would say is not necessarily the role. A lot of the time you want to uh, break the charge with the Peasant Mobs, but Wade's doing things a little bit differently here. The Battle Pilgrims actually, you can see 58, well, 48 in terms of attack and defense with this kind of rank blob here. Um, and they are just handily wiping these Rangers, which is pretty impressive. They are probably quite a bit more expensive with the Chevrons. But here come the Swordmasters of Hoeth. They're going to be... Great with their anti-infantry. The weapon strength is not amazing, but great stats. That being said, Battle Pilgrims have equivalent stats right now, so it's not going to be actually that grave of an engagement. If Rapunz dies, though, it'll all be over, and Eltharion's going to do his best to try and finish Rapunz off here. Here comes the Chain Lightning, though. You can see the Peasant Mobs now making their way up and around the flank. A little bit unfortunate on the Chain Lightning. They're going to get some of the Beast Slayers of Bastille, and did some decent damage to the Swordmasters as well. But uh, Holy Wardens of Lemaze and Tall out here losing pretty hard as they are outnumbered heavily. Here comes the Dread Flank. Oh man, the peasant mobs emerging from the forest. So we talked a little bit about zombies. Peasant mobs are uh, interesting in that they can't get immune to psychology from the Grail Relic. It's not really great though because their leadership is still so low. But in this situation here, they're going to start to uh, chase off some rangers. I mean, they are only 100 points, 120 unit models, good amount of HP, less HP than zombies. I would say overall just less useful probably than zombies, but the stats difference is something to be aware of in terms of the attack and defense, and especially stacking here. Like, look at these mobs. Yeah, 33 melee attack, 23 melee defense, and uh, still only 16 weapon strength, but their leadership is good enough that they're going to stand in here and fight. And, uh, oh man, something just landed there. And not only are they going to stand and fight, but they'll just provide a nice little HP sponge that uh, is going to actually hang around for a decent amount of time. Would I recommend doing this in a normal build? I can't say I would, but this Foot Rapunz build, another really nice Chain Lightning there, just going to absolutely wreck those Swordmasters. Gets a decent chunk of the uh, Men at Arms with Shields as well. Yeah, over here on the low ground, we've got a little bit more real engagement, what you can expect. Peasant mobs are actually, they're holding up these spearmen a good amount of time, and a spearman is a unit that peasant mobs are great at tying down. Like a low, kind of, low melee attack, defensive, anti-large unit. Peasant mobs will be able to tie them down for a really good amount of time. And that's what you need often as Bretonia, given that these anti-large units are really what threaten your knights, which is more of a typical <laughs> build, is to bring some kind of cavalry. Oh man, way with the wild infantry spam builds here. Full on melee infantry. If we check back in on the Swordmasters, they are just not doing great uh, between the Chain Lightnings and the endless uh, just horde of HP being thrown at them here. It's really uh, an unfortunate situation. 
Rapunce and uh, the Paladin also. You could, I guess, do this with uh, Henri with uh, Rapunce's faction. But they're just, just bullying, being very mean to this poor noble who is getting ransacked. <laughs> oh man, Rapunce here. With that anti-infantry. Wow, 660 weapon strength on foot. The foot character meta is pretty interesting. I don't necessarily know that it's a true meta. It's kind of still a little bit of a meme in my opinion. Uh, there, But it is more real than it used to be, certainly. And especially like this, where you have a squad of foot heroes supporting each other. And uh, a, actually a number of the strong kind of melee lords and heroes. We've seen France also. Rapunce is a decent one as well. Um, a lot of these other kind of characters... That would normally take mounts. If you take them on foot, there is a number of benefits. Um, you know, supporting your infantry line is certainly one of them. And we've seen that here. Uh, mobs are... Let's check in. Mobs here. Die to sword masters, as you would expect, even with the ranks. Or lads. Uh, they're doing what they can. But we've got some more coming back. And there, someone mentioned in the comments section about the zombie video. That there is some benefit to your... Meat shields like routing and coming back. I mean, kind of, but the problem is when they come back, they're often so tattered that they just immediately route anyway, regardless of what kind of engagement they get into. So there, there is that to consider. Um, but th th there is something to be said for being able to, you know, have your opponent kind of forget about them, bring them back in to bog something down, um, possibly get like a little rear charge penalty, leadership penalty, or even using them to chase routing units. Um, not that they'll really, you know, keep those units routed oftentimes, but like here, for example, this is a great example right here. Way is now grabbing these peasant mobs here. There's only 32 of them. They're barely hanging on seven leadership, but I mean, these swordmasters are maybe not likely to recover anyway, but, uh, yeah, I mean, just in case, might as well just send the peasant mobs after them, right? So, <laughs> I, I was trying to think of a good way to showcase peasant mobs, and I actually watched Wei play this game live, and I was like, you know what, that's the most ridiculous build I've ever seen. I need to cast it, and uh, peasant mobs also need a highlight. They're a little bit relevant to the discussions I've been having lately. Although they didn't really do a ton in this replay, they don't really ever do a ton. I mean, the best, best case scenario is they get shot in the face by a lot of expensive ammunition. I mean, that's literally the best case scenario. Even just taking charges is, it's good. It wears your opponent out a little bit and it can potentially block them from charging a more high value unit, which is uh, decent, but yeah. I mean, that's really what their their role is. They're, if you kind of look at their unit card here, it literally says meat shield. <laughs> Right? Absorbing damage that would otherwise hurt a more useful or precious target, and that is exactly what they should be used for, um, by and large. That being said, they can also pad out your numbers and make your army look a lot bigger than it is, providing some, uh, you know, some kind of psychology there. Dragon Prince is looking very blue under Eltharian's color scheme. And it does come down to a pretty kind of pitched late game engagement here. There's not a lot of units currently in the pocket, but that's because a lot of these others. Look at that. The Swordmaster's actually shattered, and they also somehow routed the peasant mobs. So, yeah, fun stuff from away. And, uh, yeah, well played to both players, actually. Super interesting battle, I have to say. Kind of odd builds on both sides, but Rapunce, man, 20... 600 damage value, 6,253 damage dealt, very impressive stuff. The Chain Lightning's also from the Heavens Damsel, quite good, and the Paladin doing his thing. I mean, the Peasant Mobs, I'd have to look to see how much they cost ranked up like they, this. I don't think any of them actually pay for themselves, but they're still here, which is something that can't be said of regular Peasant Mobs. And, uh, you know, they took lots of damage, which, if you, you know, according to the tooltip, is the right thing to, <laughs> to do with them. Right, and you compare, I mean, the Men at Arms fare, fared somewhat better, but actually not that much better in many cases, and that is something to be aware of, certainly. Um, there are niche situations where Men at Arms are more useful, and sometimes it's good to bring both, but uh, Peasant Mobs are basically always good, except in a, a handful of matchups. Yeah, Battle Pilgrims. I'd have to look again to see their cost. I don't know if they necessarily paid for themselves, but... Interesting to see, nonetheless, all this rank 9 infantry and just no cavalry or skirmish units whatsoever. No peasant bowmen, no... yeah, no knights. Interesting. 
Uh, for the High Elf side, the Nobles ended up coming into a buzzsaw there up against those foot characters. Eltharian fared somewhat better, but he still probably didn't quite pay for himself because of that heavy spell load out there. Um, granted, I, I kind of understand. Soul Quench is probably the one that I would cut from there. Like Tempest, Apotheosis, I definitely get. Um, Arcane and Forging, I'm also not the biggest fan of, so I'd probably just go with those two. Maybe you take uh, Hand of Glory as well for the melee attack buff, but also no skirmish units on this side. Maybe a couple of archers would have been nice. The rangers are just an odd pick here. Um, they, I mean, in Bretonian infantry is not really scary to you anyway. To I mean, I say that, and then you look at this battle and kind of reconsider things. But just in general, you would expect more kind of anti-large uh, targets to go after, right? Which is why I'm a big fan of spearmen and white lines in this matchup. Just kind of spamming both of them. Swordmasters, likewise, again, you, there's no elite infantry for you to have to kill here. And against a horde of infantry, even still, they, they I mean, they... One of them barely almost pays for itself. Yeah, probably pays for itself. The other one does not. Still, uh, yeah, I mean, with the infinite number of targets to go after, they're just not really meant for clearing hordes of infantry. They're more better for going after elite infantry targets, and there's just better ways of dealing with them as high elves, in my opinion. The Dragon Princes had a bit of a field day. <laughs> but, yeah, more Dragon Princes definitely would have been a nightmare for a way to have to deal with, but that is what it is. Just an odd, interesting battle, not something you see every day, and thus a great way for me to showcase the lowly peasant mobs. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let's just quickly finish up here. I know I've discussed these guys in comparison a little bit, but I just want to quickly one-to-one -one go uh, zombies and uh, peasant mobs. We'll kind of leave the dis this game in discussion for another day. But, uh, yeah, the, the stat difference here is something to be aware of, and given that, I mean, you wouldn't think that Bretonia actually has that many buffs, right? But Raponce is, uh, considering it's a constant plus 9, plus 9, is pretty impressive, and with this rank 9 status, they're only at yeah, 230 points, they're like a little bit less than a men at arms regular, which is still probably better in every way, but if you're then maxed out on men at arms, consider you've got this uh, little buff to affect them. It's very, very interesting, certainly, just to think about, and I don't know that it would really work in practice in most cases, but it certainly worked in practice in that specific case. Um, but regardless, you know, you can get immune to psychology and extra leadership from the Grail Relic. Grail Relics are really not amazing, though, because they're not very cost-effective. They're not going to really do a lot besides give you that immune to psychology, and it's not even that big of an AoE. Kind of a, just as a an aside, I... Probably gonna hold off on making a video about the Grail Relic for some time. Uh, it really needs more. Like, it needs more AoE buffs. Like, for example, if it gave Blessing of the Lady in an AoE, that way you could give it to your infantry units, which would be actually really useful and, and quite strong. Um, I think that would be a great way to buff this thing up. But, like, comparing it to Corpse Cards, for example, it's just, in every way, way worse, pretty much. Um, immune to Psychology. 12 Leadership's not bad, don't get me wrong. But, uh, yeah, just not, if, if it was like 250 points, it would be useful, I would say. Or, again, you give it more abilities at its current price, and that would also make it more useful. Sort of as an aside there, I guess since I talked about the corpse carts with the zombies, and we're not talking about Grail Relics really today, although it did feature there. Um, what else can I say about peasant mobs? Yeah, I mean, they're just kind of uh, here, ready to get wrecked. Less HP than zombies, and they don't cause fear, and better melee attack and defense, but that doesn't matter because they'll just run away. So there you go. Uh, I do have a replay, I think, where they manage to eat a lot of arrows, I want to say, maybe? I don't know. You guys will have to go back and check if you search that. Peasants catching arrows or something like that. You might be able to find that video. Anyway, hopefully you got you guys enjoy. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.